Okay, it's finally time to go back out to the where, where, words. It's finally time to go back out to the warehouse and work on a wheelchair project. So there's that Invicare TDX SP2. I always get the names mixed up. Yeah, TDX SP2. It's that red one. We replaced the batteries in it and a few streams back and whatnot. Um, but I was wanting to get the seating widened on it, or at least the backrest. Apparently you can't widen the backrest without widening the seating. Anyways, after I mentioned it in a previous video, a couple of people got a hold of me with some interesting ideas and links to videos and stuff like that. And it turns out um, I just wasn't paying attention when I was trying to adjust things last time. And um, yeah, so today we're going to go out there and take the thing apart. How long is this video? Looks like about 37 minutes-ish. But uh, basically you're welcome to come along for the ride and watch me work on a chair. I I'm re-recording this. I... I don't feel like garbage, but I also don't feel awesome. But it was one of those days where I just, I didn't want to stay in the bus all day and I wanted to go get something done. So sometimes if, if there's no negative health benefit to doing stuff and pushing yourself a little bit, that's what you do. As, as you can probably tell if you're watching the video or you'll watch it later. Okay, maybe my brain's still not working correctly. <laughs> we go and work on a chair. Hopefully you enjoy the video. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, welcome back to the face of the sun slash... Actually, this camera does pretty good with a dynamic range on the white walls. All right, cool. So, um, let's clean all the stuff off of this here chair and see if we can get the seating adjusted. Uh, go faster, chair. How do I turn up the speed? There we go. Oh, by the way, this here is the heat press. I got it from eBay. It's uh, it's some China import thing, but this is one of those items, much like side cutters, that is used in manufacturing in China and whatnot quite a bit. So it was 160 bucks for the setup. It's an eight in one machine, so it can do like flat stock like shirts and aluminum signs and stuff like that. And then also a few different sizes of tapered uh, commuter mugs or traveling cups or whatever, then a few different sizes of hats and all that stuff. So I'm hoping this should work all right. Now I'm fully aware that this and this little machine here, I'm probably going to outgrow very quickly. But my thought was I need to do something and starting with less expensive, smaller machines falls into that category of doing something with the funds that I have available for this sort of project. So anyways, um, I'm not gonna unbox that right now, but we do have it and I'm super happy. Actually, I should probably make sure it's not damaged, but for now, um, we need to look at this chair. It's been, uh, it's been in the back of my mind quite a bit and I wanna figure out the seating. Okay, so what I was needing to do was widen up these mounting points right here so I could put a wider seat back on. But now that I'm looking at it, I can tell there's some adjustment down here. And I think under this cover, oh, that just, that just come right off? There's a thumb screw down here. Okay, aha. So we do have the width adjustment, the width adjustment bar here. After looking at this though, I'm realizing that if I make this whole thing wider, it's gonna make these armrests stick out further. And this is about as wide as I want that right now. The problem was trying to put another backrest on here with this style of mounts, it was a little more than an inch wider for the mounting and there wasn't enough clearance here. So I could make this wider, but then our armrests would stick way out. Although now that I'm looking at these, these armrests appear to be adjusted Oh, okay, well maybe that's the solution. See how we've got three different positions here for uh, mounting this? It's all the way out. Yeah, and if we look at this bar, we can see that's still inside the tire line. All right, cool. Well, maybe this will work then. Um, these are pretty easy to take off. You just flip them back, turn that little knob, and then there we go, it comes right off. Yeah, so we got some room to play with here. I think we've got, I think safely probably inch and a half on each side. Yeah, we've got, got some more holes right there for adjustment on each side, these things. 
All right, cool. Well, um, yeah. Well, thank you to the people that sent me the info on this. Um, I was thinking this was a little bit more complicated and I hadn't actually pulled that back cover off. This actually looks like standard motion concept style seating. And I think if we pull these other covers off down here. Yeah, all right, cool. All right, well, I'm gonna play around with this a little bit and uh, update you when I figure something out. This is very much an exploratory experiment. I need to get this backrest off of here before we can do anything else. I started going at these bolts here, but they're kind of annoying to get to. Then I realized right here, we've got a mounting plate. So I think if we remove these, the entire, keep punching the microphone, the entire seat back with all the mounting hardware should come off of here. So let's give that a try. And my hands are not wanting to cooperate today. Wait a minute. I think it's cold in here. Yeah, I should probably turn on the heat. I think that'll make a difference. Oh, by the way, laundry cart. Did I mention that? Yeah, so I brought the laundry cart back out here um, because I didn't want it to freeze inside the green van. Maybe I did already mention it in this video. Yeah, I took the barbecue back out to the bus so I can finally use that thing now and uh, do my assorted cooking and things. For once, I can finally use this thing. Um, probably should have closed the door. It stopped smoking pretty quick, but uh, heck, I don't think I've used that thing in about a year. So yeah, that's gonna be awesome. All right, out of the way, all you stuff. This is not good for your toes, by the way. Engaging sunshine mode. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah, I think it's gonna work. See, it's wiggly now. Cool. These do have quite the stack of hardware with a washer and lock washer though, so I don't wanna lose that. And last one. Yeah, there we go. Comes right off. Man, I really need to build some workbenches or something in here. I just, I don't have enough flat surfaces to put things on. Okay, now I think this piece comes off. Sounded like breaking, probably not supposed to do it that way, but it didn't break. And then there's another plastic cover here, which has some screws. All right, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, check it out. Look at all this adjustment we got. This is why I appreciate people sending me messages about stuff because um, for whatever reason, I just didn't notice all of this last time I was screwing around with this thing and I was banging my head into it for like two or three hours. Um, but yeah, I think this, uh, this is adjustable. I just realized I'm such a noob. I don't have to lean over to do this. This thing has a seat lift on it. Looks like it was a little bit stuck. Well, the rubber bumpers it was sitting on, I think were sticky, but yeah. Let's get this thing up here where we can actually see it and work on it. There we go. Looks like we've got some, are those Torx or Allen? I think they're just rounded out Allens. Yep, just Allen screws with a lot of miles on them. Oh, they don't have to come out all the way either. There's a little slot. Okay, maybe they do. I was noticing there was a little slot in the bottom there, but looks like something else is screwed on in here. It's like some wiring maybe. Ah, a little uh, cable hub. Interesting. Wow, these cables are huge. I guess we can unplug. Uh, let me turn the chair off. Once again, I'm not super familiar with uh, dynamic links yet. And I'm not sure how the auto detect stuff works and if you can just unplug things and have it be okay or whatever. I do know though from my bounder that you gotta be careful with these little latches. Um, these things will break. I was screwing around in my bounder which has the uh, DX2 dynamic controls, which uses very similar connectors, I think. At least they had these tabs. Anyways, I broke one on that. Okay. I think that exposes everything we need. Hmm. Cable chain. What do, you, what, what do you call these? I forget the name. White Raven. What, what, what do you call these things? I forget. 
cable chain or wiring loom track or well, this one looks like it has easy access too you can just push the little things and jam more wires in there hmm lights I might be doing this out of order but I'm at least going to loosen up these nylock bolts here because I know they're gonna need to come off at some point Would have been easier if I'd remember to bring my T-handle Allen wrenches with me. Or my ratcheting end wrenches for that matter. Those things probably need to live out here. <laughs> I just remembered that sockets exist. There we go, that's a little better. Interesting note, these nut These nylocks have like a little Oh, is that metal? I thought it was rubber. There's a little captive cap on there. Interesting. Can't fit a socket in here. Oh, these ones weren't even tight. By the way, this is one of those projects today. I kind of feel like crap just in general, but also Oh, slighty thing. But also, I just kind of switch my brain off and start working on stuff. When I look at it as a whole, it seems very, um, uh, like it's going to be a whole lot of work that I don't want to do. And it probably is, but um, I've learned sometimes that just switching off your brain and doing stuff is good. And I'm kind of happy now that I did this because I know it's possible and I can whoop, can finally get the backrest I want on here and start playing around with this chair. Um, and I'm pretty sure I've got the enough energy to at least get started on this. So anyways, sometimes you just got to do stuff anyways. I do be careful though because there is an hour drive back from here so I don't want to get too tired. But I can do most of this sitting in my chair or at least leaning on it as you can see I'm not sitting in the back and I'm kind of holding myself up with my elbow, but uh, yeah, just nice and slow. Now, Motion Concepts does have a video about this from like seven years ago that's fairly detailed. I kind of skimmed through it. I haven't watched it yet again today, but I think we have to pull these off. And then there's some screws here in the front that attach to the side rail. And maybe up here, oh yeah, up here as well. Just looking at it one, little step at a time. If I look at the whole thing, it's like, ah, oh, so much work. But right now, all I'm thinking about is this bolt right here and that one. This appears to just be, yeah, this is just a cover plate. It's not really structural. In theory, I could have left that on there, but I want to be able to get access to everything down here. So get the other side now. And also for shellfish reasons, filming myself taking this apart is actually helpful because if I can't figure out where any of this stuff goes later, all I have to do is watch back the footage. Ah, Tourette's is annoying. Where's my magnetic tool trays? Someone sent me a bunch of those a while back, and I, and somewhere in the last two moves, I don't know where they ended up. That would have been super helpful for this. I feel like they've got to be somewhere here in the warehouse. Ah, uh, two pieces. Ah, uh, yep, there we go. Here's our two more adjustments up here. Oh, they've got an interesting stack of washers going on here. If I remember correctly, Invacare uses these little things that kind of look like lock washers as spacers down in here. So when you pull these bolts out, you gotta be super careful because those might fall out and go somewhere. Let's see if that's the case here. Hang on, I think I can put this into speed wrench mode. There we go. Yep, there they are. I don't know if the detail on this camera shows it, but it looks like a lock washer, but they're using that as a spacer in there. Also, look at this bowl, huh? Look how weird that is. 
um, don't lose these. Here's what I'm talking about with this little lock washer thing. These can get trapped in here pretty easily, but they use them as sort of a spacer thing. See if I can get this out of here. Well, I shouldn't be doing this with the bolt. Yeah, see, there you go. With these weird little flat lock washery things. Also, if you notice, uh, hang on a second, put all these back together like that so I don't lose the parts. But if you notice here, we've got a whole bunch of holes here and they're all at different angles. That allows you to kind of preset your leg rests if you want them at a different angle. So this one here is at one height. And then if we go up, then this one is lined up. Go back down, that one's lined up. So you can see there's just a little difference between the two, but I guess technically motion concepts, Invicare, whatever. But yeah, it allows you to kind of adjust the angle of all this, which is pretty neat. Oh, and I'm probably going to have to cut, actually that one's fine. We have to watch out for wiring when we start making this wider too. Pro tip 3.0, get jiggy with the Sharpie. Um, mark out all your things, especially when you're making adjustments like this and there's like thousands of possible combinations of things. It's nice to be able to see where you started. And also with all of this hardware loose, it would be entirely possible to get bolts in with different parts adjusted differently. So we'll be able to look at these lines after widening this out and measure equally, um, or at least eyeball them and see how far we've gone. Okay, I think that's most of them. Uh, do I not have any rubber mallets here? Um, I guess we could kind of use that. I do believe we're ready to start pulling on things. Um, uh -huh. Nice. I'm just gonna use the this part, not the actual hammer. Oh yeah, cool. I do suppose this is the point in time where I should probably be figuring out how wide I want this all to be. Um, hmm. Uh, I think I've decided I'm just gonna poach the backrest off of this chair. Um, it will take my backup, backup, backup chair offline, but I haven't needed this thing in a while. And there's already another backup, well, two other backups in place. So we're going to take this off. This was seating from my very first rehab chair. Well, originally I had an Invicare TDX SI2 with like van seating on it, basically. But then they went through and put this ultra low motion concepts or ultra low max um, stuff on here. And this was the original seat, uh, seat back for that. So I'm going to take this off of here. It's in theory compatible with that. Um, so yeah, let's get this thing off of here. Let's see if it'll still work. By the way, this seating system was never sold on Quantums. This is something I did. It's, it's motion concept seating on a Quantum Q6 Edge 1, so you will never see this out in the wild. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, well I'm gonna take this off real quick. I'm not gonna film it because whatever. And then I think instead of using a tape measure, <coughs> oh, coughing. Uh, I think instead of using a tape measure, I'm just going to hold this up on the back of the chair, put the bolts in, and then sort of set my spacing with that. Eh, I'll be right back. We have our two seat backs here on the floor. This is the old one, and what I need to do is take this hardware off and put it onto this one. The mounting points do appear to be compatible. There are some spacers on here, but... When I put this all back together, I want it to be as... Man. <laughs> I want it to be as narrow as possible, so I'm gonna try and not use those spacers. It doesn't look like the spacers are needed for clearance, but we'll see. As I recall, these bolts are typically very long. Yes. Those are like inch and a half bolts or something like that. So let's put these spacers out of the way here. All we need to do, 
Oh, sweet. Okay, I found this on the web for due. Check it out. Oh, my phone thought I was talking to it. So we just need to put these back on. Oh, so without the spacers, there isn't a whole lot of clearance in here. Although I think that should be all right. Meh, we'll try it. Oh, wait a minute, these are shoulder bolts. Um, let's switch to other ones, which I have prepared earlier, which are actually on this. Yeah, see, a little better. Now on that chair over there, you only have certain adjustment points. So it is entirely possible that putting these on here may require a little bit of space or adaptation because the width adjustments we have, I think they go in half inch increments maybe, or maybe they're one inch, but it may not line up with this. Yeah, there's enough room to reach in there. All right, cool. I'm going to get this other side swapped out and then we'll uh, try fitting it on the chair. Oakley dokely we have the new hardware installed. So let's see, wait, if this is going to line up in any meaningful way. Ooh. I uh, gotta be careful about leaning on this. I just realized with all those bolts removed, everything can just rotate. Okay. Looks like we're gonna be good. Uh, probably a little bit too soon here. Let's, um, let's continue widening up this chair a little bit. And go from there. So far we've moved it on this side. Looks like about a half inch. Well, I'm gonna put it on the camera and adjust this a little bit. And uh, yeah, bear back. Okay, and I'm glad I made those marks. Looks like this side we've gone out almost an inch and this side almost nothing. Oh, you know what? I forgot, this piece moves back and forth. So we gotta use a different reference point. Here we go. So about a half an inch here, you probably can't see the Sharpie mark, half an inch here. And it looks like our brackets are going to line up here. I put a couple of screws back in this crossbar just to kind of hold everything up. And probably a little hard to see, but it looks like we are in spec here on both sides. So. We're gonna call it a half an inch. I'm gonna get all this hardware put back in here, uh, like on these crossbars and this and up here and all that, and then see if we can bolt this on. We do have some slots here, so we can play with the distance just a little bit. But just holding this up here, it looks like, yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, so we've made it one inch wider overall we're gonna lock everything back down. Then we're gonna play with our seat back hardware to get everything just right. One thing you gotta watch out for on these, like the legs up front, they're just on a tube with two pipes going in and the bolts are the only thing that center it. Center it. The angle can change and it can slip left and right. Same with this piece up here with the backrest and the anti-shear mechanism. I don't really have any good advice for that. We did mark it out and I can kind of see my Sharpie marks right here. It looks like we're a tiny bit off as far as rotation goes and that can affect that mechanism and also how far forward this backrest can go. To me, it looks like it's leaning back a little bit right now. Um, I don't remember if it was like that before, but I also don't know if there's another set of holes in there that would allow me to change that. I don't think so. Um, I also don't remember if I had this actuator tilted up all the way before we started or not. So number of factors here, you can adjust your, um, backrest a little bit for tilt, but the little bit backwards, this is currently, I don't think there's any other holes in there. So we're just going to go ahead and put this back together like it is noting that if our recline angle is way off, there could be something there that needs to be adjusted. But with these linkages and stuff here for the anti-shear mechanism, you don't have a whole lot to play with. 
Actually, you know what we should do? Let me, uh, I'm gonna power this thing up and we're gonna try reclining it a little bit and uh, see if everything's working smoothly or not. I think that'd probably be a good thing to try here. So let's plug that back in, whatever it is. And I've got these two bolts just sitting in here. These ones are tight on this mechanism that slides up and down here. So let's see what happens. Oh, I've got the brakes off, but uh, let's see which one's reclined. I think it's this one. Hmm, not letting me recline. Can we do it with this maybe? Oh yeah, there we go. So I'm just gonna recline it slowly and keep an eye on everything. Okay. I think we're okay. These things are sliding. These linkages don't seem to be binding or anything. Okay, let's go back up. Just keeping an eye on all these clearances and stuff here to make sure nothing's gonna bottom out or whatever. And that's all the way forward. Okay, so it's entirely possible that we had, uh, what is that, maybe six or seven degrees. Although the chair is tilted up as well. Eh, whatever, we're just gonna put it back together. I can fix it later if need be. Also another thing to note when you're tightening down fasteners like this that are on a tube, you don't wanna to go too crazy tight because you can deform these tubes. These are nylock nuts on here. So basically you wanna just get them good and snug and then let the nylocks do the work as far as holding. Were there washers on here before? I don't remember. They look like they're a little bit bent, which would mean they were clamped onto a bar. <sighs> I don't know. My organization of all these bolts wasn't very good today, and I'm temporarily switching my brain on and off because I don't want to think about stuff. <laughs> Anyways, um, we'll just continue on here. I'm not sure if you could see it very well before, but these angled brackets here with the four slots in them, those interface with these bars here on each side and there's a number of holes going up and down here. These do have a little bit of play to them with the uh, shear reduction mechanism, but they basically attach onto here. And uh, yeah, I'm realizing now that the width of this armrest might be a thing. Eh, it's a problem for future me. We'll deal with that in a few minutes. Just kind of eyeballing stuff here. Looks like most of it is straight. All right, let's try and jam this backrest on. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. I wonder how high this was before. I can do some investigatory looking here. You can see there's kind of some scratches right there. Oh yeah, there's wear up here too, see that? And it looks like there's some wear at the bottom. Wait, are these the exact same size? Oh, yeah, they are, they're the same size. So we'll just center up and put some bolts in. Okay, this is gonna be hard to show, but we are literally one bolt width too narrow. I don't know if you can see that, but we're literally the width of this bolt too narrow on the chair for this to go in there. So I think what that means is we're gonna take it all back apart, go another half inch wider on both sides, and then probably run those spacers on the brackets so it lines up. <laughs> um, adjusting seating can become a lot of work. What time is it? Almost one, okay. Um, I'm gonna eat some food real quick and ponder this and look at some things and then uh, I'll update you in a little bit. Going another inch wider, like half inch on each side, seems annoying, like maybe it's not you don't have to, but I don't know, we'll see. Anyways, I'll be back. Problem we're running into here, these slots are not deep enough in this direction on both sides to pick up those holes. I forgot one very important concept. I can just make stuff. So I did a bunch of looking around on that thing and mounting it in this position is not going to interfere with anything. So I'm just gonna modify these holes so we can bolt it right on there because there is absolutely no reason we need to make the seating an entire inch wider for literally 
one half a bolt width. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to elongate these holes a little bit with the greatest possible uh, amounts of safety. Something like that. Actually, I probably need a, well, anyways, I, I'm gonna modify this and then we're gonna put it back together because yeah. It's been almost an hour since I picked up the camera last, but I think our seat back is installed. Okay, well, the GoPro did its thing and stopped working. Anyways, now I understand why um, they opt to make these chairs wider and just run spacers. I was able to widen those slots a little bit. Turned out it wasn't 100% necessary, but getting that thing attached was um, covered in dirt. It was quite the chore. And turns out I notched out the wrong hole on the bottom. So anyways, we're using all the stock mounting points now. I think it's on there. There's a little bit of tension on some of this stuff. So I wanna double check and make sure that our recline is still going to work properly. I think it should, but there's only one way to find out. As long as these parts here slide the way they're supposed to, I think we're good. Okay, I think we're good. That was my only concern with the amount of tension on this stuff. It might affect the ability of these little whatever that material is in there to slide on the bars, but I think we're good. No crazy noises. Okay, at this point, I am just gonna put all the bolts and stuff back together. Put these pans on here. Um, yeah, things. Oh, and uh, leg rests, obviously those have to be bolted back on. So I'm gonna do all that and then we will hop in this thing and see if it fits me any better. I think it should because that worked just fine on that chair and that thing was perfectly comfortable. So anyways, here we go. Ugh. Well, I'm just pushing through this. I think we're getting really close to done here. I've gotten everything locked back down on this. I've got the seat pan put on. The way some of these panels overlap is a little bit sus to me. Although maybe that was supposed to go on top of this. Um, I don't know, it's kind of like that when I got it. I did find a couple of bolts though that when I took them off were actually installed incorrectly and fixed that. So anyways, um, let's grab the seat cushion here. Okay, that looks huge with this wide angle lens, but um, yeah, I think that should be about right. I'm mostly, I'm mostly just looking at the height right here between the seat back and this. I think next I'm gonna play around with these armrests. We've got a little bit of room to play with here and that's just fabric. So I think I can probably pull this in uh, one or maybe even two notches there. Like I showed earlier, there's three different mounting spots for these arm bars on here. So let's play around with that. And then I think we're gonna be done. And I'll hop in this and see if it fits me and stuff. Then I can run around in it and render my opinion on this chair that came out, what, seven years ago or something? <laughs> um, I really do like motion concept seating though. It's very comfortable. Oh, I guess I do have these arm bars. Obviously these are trash. I'd have to replace these covers. I wonder if these are the same. Yeah, I think these mechanisms are the same. I don't necessarily need these huge wide things. And if I can't get them pulled in far enough, yeah, these seem to be the same deal. Interesting. All right, well, I'm gonna play around with this a little bit. And like I said, as you can see right now, our armrest is sticking way out past our tires. And that is not what I want. What do we got going on here? Lynx F key Moss. I think that's the seating controller maybe. Huh. Well, we'll get into all this stuff eventually and uh, get some learning going on about uh, uh, the Lynx control system. L-I-N-X, by the way. Okay, I'm gonna do one last push and then I will show you the result. Adjusting these, I believe, should be as simple as taking out these two bolts and probably that one. Oh, there's tracks in there. That means there's probably T-nuts. 
which means, do I have to take this thing apart? Uh, investigation's required. Sorry, the GoPro crapped out, so I don't have a stand for this thing. Be right back. I think we got lucky here. Yeah, saved by Velcro. And yep, sure enough, there's some little uh, sort of T-nut plates in there. Yeah, look at all those holes, wow. Huh? So much adjustment. Okay, let's try the middle one here. Eh, still a bit wide, but I think we can get away with that. If I try to do the inside one, then it interferes with the seat back and also hangs over the seat quite a bit. So I think if we just do this, that should be good. These are also a little bit low for me, especially with this cushion. Um, so we're just gonna rock these. Oh, by the way, this other bolt does not come out. That one stays in. Um, does something, I don't know what. But yeah, we're gonna put these about in the middle, I think, and that should be good. So we'll just tighten these down. I'm not gonna go too crazy tight because plastic and everything. So just snug. Look over that. Huh, seems good. And then we can just plonk down our pad on there and we're good. All right, just the other side. Then time for burnouts. Oh, I guess I do still need to put side guards on this thing. Wait, does this other chair have any I can poach? Uh, different rails, but I do have some permobile style ones on there. Probably not gonna do it today, but I will maybe try well, I'll maybe try and swap those on. Although, uh, this rail is pretty different though. And I think that's a project for another day, but you know, finish this up. Okay, this backrest seems to fit me pretty nicely. Uh, we need to charge our batteries though. These are those old ones we put in here. Yeah, flashing red. Definitely need to do some tuning adjustments on this. It doesn't stop super fast. And also these, these buttons quit working. They weren't working when I first got the chair and then they started working. So I don't know, we'll have to check the connections on that. They go through this little wire here. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna plug this thing in and leave it. I'm coming back out here probably Thursday to do the live stream, I think. Oh yeah, and we're gonna, we're gonna unbox the heat press, I believe. So anyways, um, yeah, call this good for now. I'm gonna plug this thing in, hop back into the F3, and then figure out what we're doing. Well, experimentation complete. We made the thing a little bit wider. We fit a wider backrest on there. Got the armrests adjusted. Um, yeah, the thing looks huge now. I don't know, these Invacares always seem to be like really wide. I suppose I could measure it, but I don't know, anyways. Well, I'm gonna load up in the van and then uh, no idea what's going on next. Uh, I should probably clean up tools and stuff before I get out of here. I always come out here and work on stuff and then leave everything laying around. And then when I come back out here later and try to do things, all the tools are everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Uh, it's whatever. Um, yeah, stuff. Okay, I think that video made sense. Plan moving forward. Oh, I forgot. I have to go back to the warehouse tomorrow, too. And I'm probably going back on Thursday, too. Anyways, I left the thing there charging. I I was realizing that yellow chair that I was showing there, that Q6 Edge 1, that thing actually has good NF22 batteries in it. So I think I'm going to swap those over to the Invacare. Since we took the backrest off of that thing and poached a bunch of parts, it's basically offline now, which means I'm free to take the batteries. So, yeah, I'm going to do that, I think tomorrow or Thursday. I don't know. Yes, I am streaming on Thursday and we're going to do a bunch of stuff. Um, anyways, um, what day is this? Tuesday. Yeah, so there probably won't be another video before Tuesday. I don't know if this will technically be up before midnight. Anyways, um, <laughs> I I'm doing good. I just stuff and things. Things work out eventually. I've just health-related stuff. Like I said before, I'm, I'm going to be getting another sleep study, and we should be able to get things sorted out. I'm just, I'm in this weird position right now to where I don't want to sound like I'm insane, <laughs> but like humor is kind of my coping mechanism, and um, 
Well, I'm in a strange spot between if I let my mind wander, then my mind wanders and I get all weird and I won't say depressed, but not happy thoughts. So yeah. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video and um, yeah, see you guys Thursday. If not sooner, but probably Thursday. All right, see ya.